Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage and to the 1958 Triumph Tier 3 restoration that we are doing in the Rusty Beauty's Garage. And today we're going to continue working on this uh, front valance. In the last episode, we replaced this flange here on the side. It was ripped off at some point and it was brazed and welded and ground and it was like messed up, but we replaced it, made sure that it matches the fender. So that went well. Then we did a lot of work on this part here. What should we call it? It's above the mouth, so it should be the nose, right? So on the nose or the mustache, above the mouth is the mustache. <laughs> so we worked on the mustache here. It had a huge dent, like something hit it like that, or the car hit something flat, so it was pushed in. We managed to pull it out and to plunge it pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Of course, it needs a little bit of body filler here and there, but it is 100, 200% better than what it was before. There's still a little bit of dents here and there. There's one I just saw here. It's behind the butt, but still, we want to make sure that it is fixed. There's a few dents here that maybe we need to fix, but the biggest problem we have is over here. It's rusted, welded, distorted, all kinds of problems here. So that's going to be the subject of this video today. We're going to take care of the bottom of the front valance. So let's get crackalacking on that. So if we take a closer look, you can see how badly distorted it is here. This line needs to be right here it's but it starts blending from here and you see the metal is pitted there's rusty holes here and there's a lot of pitted metal right here here also which from inside you can tell that any moment it's gonna become a hole as well but you can also tell that the shape here is totally gone this needs to be curved and it is like, I don't know, if I start repairing it, I'm going to have to repair lots of things. Like I have to repair this whole area here because there's rust here. I have to repair this whole area here. I have to repair this whole area here, this whole area here. So at this point, isn't it better if we replace the whole thing? It's much better. That's the best thing that we can do. Am I going to be able to do it though? Because it is a complicated shape. Luckily though, we have a reference right there on my wall. <laughs> this is from my 1957 TR6, well, TR3, which patiently awaits outside to be restored. But we have the front valance sitting as a wall art and I think the bottom part of it is in a pretty good shape. Maybe it has some dents which we can plunge and use it as a template, can't we? So that's my idea. Looks like this one is distorted a little bit too. I don't know. I think this side is actually better or this side is better. What we need is one half of it and we can use it for both sides and now when i'm looking at it it's not that complicated <laughs> it looks more complicated so what i'm gonna do is first i'm gonna punish out these dents and then we're gonna use ray shelling's method to make our own pattern and if you don't know what i'm talking about i'll explain a little bit more while i'm working here so ray Shelin, as known as the pro shaper on youtube uses masking tape and covers any panels that he wants to reproduce and out of that he creates a flexible pattern which gives him idea where on the panel there needs to be volume and where it needs to be shrunk and all that it's a very interesting thing and we're gonna try it later in this video and we'll see if we can do the same all right so actually this side is better the valance was pushed a little bit in and there was a crease here but i was actually able to open it again and get rid of this crease but looks like this side has much less dents in it has in fact actually has only one here this side has one here one here one here and here but they're gonna require another 
half an hour probably of polishing, which we're not here to work on this car. I'm actually happy that I started working on my own car <laughs> accidentally. Anyways, but what we need now is this part from the center up to here somewhere. So this is my first time I'm making this flexible shape pattern. Whether it's going to work or not, I don't know. How well it's going to work, I don't know. So we're not going to cut the valance before we have the repair patch done. But if you want to do it properly, the way Ray Shalin does it, you should go and watch his videos, not mine. I'm not going to do some of the steps that he does. For example, he uses a special low stick masking tape. Then he covers it with uh, fiberglass reinforced tape. This here is going to be my take on his technique. Let's start. So I'm going to go to the edge here. I'm not going to do the flange on the bottom. I'm just going to do until the edge. But here at the end, I want to do the flipped area as well. I don't want it to stick too much because we're going to have to unstick it after. I think my tape is low stick anyways, because that's a cheap tape that I buy from, I don't even know, I think I bought it from uh, Home Depot. So for example, Ray leaves like 16th of an inch gap between the tapes, so he can have only one layer, and then he covers it with the other tape on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two layers. So I'm going to have even amount of tape everywhere, very very small gap just so they don't overlap you know here now because of the shape I guess it starts to overlap so I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this part that overlaps I'm probably overdoing it a little bit for what this is because this is compared to what Ray Shalin does <laughs> Is like really stupid shape. So here you see now we have to make some cuts in the tape so it starts to open there because it needs to be stretched. Just trying to make it so it lays nice and flat there. So I'll show you. I'll bring you on the other side after. Okay. See now here, if I force it, it's probably going to go down, but I'm going to make some cuts. I don't want to stretch it and force it to go down. I want it to lay naturally down. Okay, so I think we're going to go below this line so somewhere to here like that and from here I'm gonna go in a pretty straight line here and up to here that's it here in the center we are in the center okay so now we're gonna cut off what we don't need but we're gonna keep what we're gonna use and we're gonna start making gauges Okay, so that's our pattern and now we're going to make a few shape gauges and we're going to do the first one right at the end here. So that's just a temporary thing and we're going to transfer this on a piece of paper. One here, one here, one here. This one, can we do one on, the, on an angle? Yeah, why not? We can do one here like that. Then one here, one here, one at the end, and we're gonna do one this way as well. I don't know if that's gonna be enough, but if we have to make more, we're gonna make more later. So let me go them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is gonna be our number nine gauge, and it is with this shape 
and for our gauges, cardboard from Stellar to our best. Non-sponsored, but willing to be sponsored. <laughs> you know what, I'll do it again because I want it to be longer so I can cut the shape actually pretty well. So I'm gonna do this. So I push them towards the end and I'm gonna go like this. And that's gonna help me now to make it better. Okay, that's good. And this is number nine. That's gonna be fun, making 10 of these. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna hold you for all of them. Let me make the rest and I'll bring you back. Okay, I think that's the last template I decided to make. Even though we, we're gonna have the valance here at all times, it's not going anywhere. We can always take more templates if we have to, or we can just lay down our piece on top. Eh, that's not gonna work very well. But anyways, so I didn't make number one here because it's pretty much straight line here. So this is gonna be my number one template for this curve here. And then I have all these here. So that's seven, five, where is five? Oh, five is this one here. So we have five. Okay, we have all the gauges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one more layer on top with clear tape, just to prevent it from stretching. I'm afraid that it might stretch, I don't know. We have tape all over the place, but just as a precaution, I'm gonna add one more layer and then we're gonna peel it off. All right, time to unstick it. So let's see if we're gonna ruin our labor of love for the last hour or so. <laughs> oh my God, how do we unstick that now? And here we go. We have the shape that we want. Let's put it on a flat surface. See how this piece is not really flat. It's, <laughs> it's actually pretty flat, which is normal. This area should be flat. And only here we have a little bit of a distortion. So is that the whole volume that it actually has, this piece? Everything else is bends. Maybe here we have a little bit of volume. So, so the whole idea of this pattern was so we can pre-stretch our piece here and there. Well, maybe here there's a little bit of volume just under that. But so we can pre-stretch it here and there and then start bending it and giving it the shape. For example, if we stretch all this, then we can just bend it and it's going to take the shape that we want it to take. In this case, let's cut a piece of metal. We're going to leave a little bit more at the bottom for a flange and the rest we're gonna cut just pretty much exact maybe we're gonna leave a little bit more here so we can actually go on the planishing hammer and stretch an area to make it rise and then we're gonna cut it to the correct shape and then we're gonna start bending our flanges and everything following up with the gauges and hopefully we can make something that that looks like that Okay, so here is our piece. So for those of you who don't know, the planishing hammer has a die underneath with a crown and another die on top, which is flat. And depending on the shape of the bottom crown, you create shapes. You stretch 
one little dot at a time, but since you're making every single dot, you're making it bigger size, now all of a sudden this volume has nowhere to go, but to go three-dimensional, you know, to go up, because you have more, not more volume, but more surface. So let me show you. I'm gonna just go around this area here and stretch it. See how we are creating a shape here now, volume. So let me bring the pattern. We need a lot more to be stretched here. You see wherever we have wrinkles, that's where we need to stretch more. Here we have just enough material, you see? But here we need to stretch more. Okay, let's see if we can do a little bit more on the English wheel as we are smoothening it, because now it is all on, there's all hammer marks and all that. Okay, so here again we have the highest crown that I have and I'm gonna continue stretching it while we are also smoothening it. See, this is the reason why I left more material here so I don't fall off the edge all the time and still I'm falling off the edge all the time so it's hard. For now the shape is not important, for now it's important to give it the correct amount of surface in certain areas, you know? Okay, if we cut it, we can do that a little bit on the stretcher, we can go and stretch just the edges here, but I want to keep trying here because the stretcher tends to rip it when it over stretches. You know what, let's go and stretch it on the stretcher. We're gonna stretch this area that we're not gonna use. But now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stretch here but this area is holding it, right? So we wanna stretch this as well. Okay, stretch that a lot. So now let's go back on the English wheel and continue stretching the this part, but now we don't need to worry about the sides. And for now, like I said, we don't care about the shapes that it takes. We're going to give it the shape that we want after that. But it's already going where we want it. You see, it's pretty much taking that shape. Ooh, we're almost there. You see, we have very little more wrinkles here and there. Okay, I'll go give it a little bit more on the planishing hammer right on the lines from here to here all the way up and down. All right, so this is where we are. We stretched it a lot. So I have these magnets here. I wish I had more. Here we start to see now where it needs more volume. You see where we have those floating parts that's where we need volume. So up to here, we're pretty good. But here in the middle, it, it clearly shows you where it needs to be stretched more. Let me see if I can find a magnet for here. So you see now, we have to stretch here in this area. This is almost there. 
but it needs more. So I'm thinking I'm gonna cut this shorter and I'm gonna stretch again with the stretcher to help it, but I'm gonna leave that area for now. That's it, I'm gonna put a much lower crown um, wheel at the bottom and I'm gonna start wheeling this area here because I have all of that. And we're gonna keep testing it and that's the only area actually that's the only area that we need to stretch here. Okay, so you see this is the smaller crown like until now we had this one and now we're gonna continue with this one. With a little pressure. We don't want the edges stretched because if we stretch them we basically stretching the whole piece doesn't give us the volume it gives us more area for the entire piece we want to stretch only the middle part without stretching the edges and that's gonna raise the center only like i'm talking as if i know what i'm doing right <laughs> kind of i'm kind of getting familiar with the English wheel, but if you want to know how to use it properly and all that, go to Ray Shelley's Pro Shaper YouTube channel and he's just really good with that. He has lots of uh, great videos on the subject. Yeah, a lot more. I just wanted to make sure that to see kind of the pace in which it is moving. I know it's moving, but I just don't want it to move all of the sudden. So it's moving very slow, which means we're good. That's interesting, the bottom end needs to be, you see how, so we need to stretch even the bottom end here, but again, not the flange, just close to the end, but here you see now we are filling up, so here now. So if we put the lines, maybe that's what we should do, we should put the lines here, five, six, and whatever so we need between four and seven mostly here where the actually where four is we need very little and where seven is we need we need very little but where six is we need a lot in this area and here we're gonna do that later so let me mark those So that's our four, that's our three, that's our six, and seven is, yeah, that's our seven. So now we know that this is the area. Okay, and now I'm gonna come here where we said close to the line, we need uh, some volume. So that's what I'm gonna do here. See, as we are raising it here, still needs more, but as we are raising it here, that increases the amount that we need here somehow which is fine. We put a little bit more pressure because it's moving pretty slow. And again, we're gonna continue here and here. Wow. All right, it is this area here. Now I'm pretty happy with it. This is the only area where we still need like a lot, a lot. So we're gonna continue.
Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Can you believe it? It still needs more here. Still needs more here. And it still needs a lot here. You know what? I'm gonna continue chasing this. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna call you because it's ridiculous. But you see what I'm doing. I'm stretching all these areas where it's floating. That's all. All right, you know what? I'm done with it. Like I have pretty much everywhere pretty good volume except here you see how much it grew <laughs> it grew like crazy you see that also added to our piece here and this was so much smaller before you see how much it grew this means that we made it thinner especially at the end it's super sharp so anyway i'm gonna mark it i'm gonna cut it here we're not gonna cut it we're gonna mark at the other at the bottom end and we're gonna create a flange but this i'm gonna cut and then we're gonna start putting it into, into the shape that we want now that we have the volume everywhere it automatically should take the shape that we want Okay, it's still not perfect, but you know what? The rest I'm gonna stretch with the hammer when I'm bending it, that's all. So now let's go on the tipping wheel and bend this flange up or in. All right, it's a week later actually, and it's after my vacation. And yes, I did like it. There was only one problem with it. It was too short. <laughs> and I don't think I've shown you the piece that we made together after it took some shape, obviously. Okay, we need another one now. <laughs> obviously, it's like still far, far, far away from being perfect, but this is just after I bent this flange and this flange here and I made them go to the right shape. It kind of fits over this one, but it doesn't because it's tight and that's how it should be. You shouldn't be able to overlap, overlap two pieces if they are the same, right? Here it kind of fits, but it needs to be pushed in. So anyway, I'm gonna have to dig out the templates. I don't know where I put them, but once we make, make this shape match the template and all these shapes here match the template, 
I'm gonna go actually run it now on the English wheel a little bit without stretching it, but just to transfer all this volume because now all the volume is here. And you saw how when I was working on the English wheel, it took crazy shape. But as uh, Ray Schelling says, as long as you have the correct volume in the right places, you can then manage the shape of the piece into the correct shape. So now I can see that here, for example, we still have volume, but it is pointing down. It went down. Here is the same. So as long as we can shape it properly, we should be able to spread this volume evenly everywhere. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna go on the English wheel and without any pressure, with, with just a little bit of pressure, I'm gonna try to run it back and forth so it can, uh, we can spread the volume everywhere. And then of course, we're gonna try to, with the templates to match the correct shape everywhere. Does it fit on our valance though? Absolutely no. <laughs> you see, it's so out of shape. So that tells me that this is bent in a lot, like it needs to come out a lot. Anyway, let me run it a little bit on the English wheel and see if we can make it smooth. Because now if you look at it that way, you see, <laughs> we don't want that. Okay, so with the smaller English wheel, I was able to go into closer to the walls here. And now it looks much better, except this belly here that we had is still there. At least the rest of it is smoothened out. And I checked it a few times with the gauges. So most of them look pretty good. So number nine, for example, is this one. And we're pretty close. I mean, the curve still needs to be worked on, but we almost have the correct shape here. That's number eight here. It doesn't fit again because of the curve here. It needs to be much tighter. And we're gonna do that. For now, I'm just keeping it open because of the um, English wheel, so I can fit it there better, but I think it's about time to fix the curve so I can fit the gauges better. But that's eight, we said, so that's here. But if you look even from a distance, the part and the gauge are pretty parallel here in this part. But then we go to seven, and look what's going on with seven. Not that parallel anymore. But the problem is not at seven and not at six. The problem is in between them. I don't have a gauge there. We can always make another gauge, 6A, for example. The other ones fit pretty well. So that's four, which fits like that. And that is pretty tight too. So I don't know. I'm going to start now bending this more with the smaller gauge and all that to make it the correct shape and try to bring it as close as possible to the templates and if we are able to do that and we still have this belly here then we're going to shrink that with the shrinking disc yeah, so it looks like this socket is the correct shape for most of the, the radius of that curve Unfortunately, my highest crown on the English wheel is this. And because of these two edges, but you know what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, what if I put it on my plate and get rid of these two edges here? I don't know, we'll see. If I get rid of these, then I might be able to go inside and smoothen this dent because I'm putting dents there right now. I'm putting dents here, right? But the gauges start to fit better. 
yeah kind of fits better you see the i'm working on this curve night right now from here to here and here to here so this curve is not so critical right now for me as long as it is the same from one end from here to the other end it's okay it's important to fit this and this is pretty good now and five six five is actually this one so this is four see that's pretty far so we need to bend more here okay Remember, this is, the, this is this part which we couldn't stretch enough, remember? And because we couldn't stretch it enough, now we don't have enough material to push this down because it needs to be, uh, it needs to be stretched in order to go lower because it just doesn't go. So that's why I'm trying, now I have to stretch a lot more here. So I'm debating whether to go, maybe I should go on the actual stretcher and just stretch this part and that's gonna allow me to push it down more because that's what's, that's what's holding me my template up you see okay I'm gonna go on the stretcher and stretch from here to here very gently the problem with the stretcher is now you see I have a little curve here and now that curve is gonna disappear I'm gonna have to make it again after So six now kind of fit there. And this curve is not way too bad. So when we fix this belly in the middle, it's gonna be fine. I'm more curious about four. Okay. We still need to bend. We need to basically move this curve down this way and make this curve more pronounced because five is this one now but huh, looks like the end needs to come out so the end needs to be straightened in this direction you see i don't know if you see so now it is good so we are good here we are good here but we're not good here this means this needs to go in the middle, we need to go lower. Okay, I was able actually to do something about it. So I used this dolly I started filming a time lapse, but the, my battery died, so I don't know how much of that happened. But what I did was I used this dolly and I was holding it in this area, but I'm gonna show you here so you can understand. So I was holding it away from the curve and I was hammering like that. And little by little, I was able to move this curve a little bit further down, I believe. So now this curve is a little bit bigger, but it fits actually let's start from here now i think i have them all pretty close nine has a little bit of a belly here in the middle so it needs to be straightened but you know this is where it meets the other side so i think i'm gonna leave it like that because i like when it has a little bit of belly because it has it here eight here you see it requires more belly a little bit more at the end of the day it's gonna be a feel 
it's gonna be how I feel it. We are very close though. Eight, seven is this one. So I like this one, I like seven actually. So if we can make them all the same, a seven, it's gonna be perfect. See, five is pretty good. Four is the diagonal one, the one that we just finished working on. And I'm actually pretty happy with it now. But you see, number three needs a little bit more belly here in the center. So we might do a little bit of English wheeling here on the small English wheel to raise this a little bit. Because I try to bend it and it doesn't want to go. Like it just doesn't want to go. <coughs> because of all the flanges and everything now it automatically goes in this shape and this is number two number two is also requiring a little bit of belly here which is going to be tricky now because here we go into a reverse curve now so we will see how we're going to do that but i am actually really happy with how it goes i have some hammer marks here that i'm going to straighten now on the english wheel and we're gonna go from there. I have one more template, which is this one. I made this one later, I believe. So this is 87608 is here. So this is for this curve. That's pretty good, except here at the end. So maybe that's why we have to dip here because this is too raised. I might shrink this a little bit, but you know what? little by little. I'm gonna work here on my own a little bit and here and then when all this is done I'm gonna bring you back and we're gonna try to shrink here with the shrinking disc. Okay so this is where we are. Now it doesn't fit over anymore which is a good thing. Before it was fitting because this curve was too open so now that we closed it it doesn't fit anymore but you can see that it's pretty close to, to fit. So now we have to deal with that. You can see that's what I'm disturbed about because you see this belly here, it is just, it needs to be here. It needs to be moved, but it doesn't move. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to shrink it and then stretch a little bit here because I kept stretching here because this is pretty low right here and this is high. We just need to move it, but it doesn't work. So anyways, Let's shrink all that. Let's see if we can do that with the shrinking disc. I haven't done that in a while. All right, so I haven't used one of these in ages, but I have this one. I wish I had, maybe I'm gonna order a bigger one. So this is uh, four and a half inch or five, and there's a nine inch one. The nine inch one obviously works better because there's more friction, but how it works is this is just piece of metal you see it's not uh, wow all right these bearings are gone anyway um, it's just a piece of metal and it uses friction between this metal and this metal and it becomes hot and it makes this one hot this one is spinning so eventually this one is cooling down but this one is becoming hot and when it becomes hot we quickly take a wet uh, rag or towel and we pull it down. And as it cools down, it goes and it shrinks. And the idea is with this, when you have an even surface, you put it flat. And as it is going flat, it only uh, heats up the high spots, right? Or it heats up the high spots more than the low spots. And that's how when you put a wet towel on top, it shrinks the high spots and leaves the low spots where they are so here we're gonna have to go over the entire thing we don't want just a spot we want a big area to be heated so let's try okay there's a little bit of steam but not a lot which tells me that it wasn't hot enough so we're gonna continue Actually, I feel a flat spot on top now. 
I don't know if you're gonna see it. No, it's not seen yet. Maybe it's just my eyes. Definitely working. I can see or I can feel the high spots moving. Now, this and these are the higher spots before the center was the highest. I think we're pretty good now. So here, of course, this is low. We know from before. And this now it became a little bit low, but this is where it was the highest, right? So I'm trying to shrink a little bit more here now in between the two, the two lows. And then we're gonna go on the English wheel again. And we're gonna try to make this entire portion here even. So it is pretty good now coming from this way and then it goes low here. So I'm gonna go on the English wheel now and I'm gonna work on this area. I'm actually really happy with the result. You see the reflection from the light, how it is pretty straight up to here. But here I realized something that if you look at this corner here from this angle, it has a little bit of a curve. And here we don't have that. So this curve that we have here, we need to transfer also here. So this is easy though, we can do that on the shrinker. And that's gonna help also because we have a low spot here right now. But as we curve it, maybe that's gonna become a higher spot. If not, we can always go continue on the English wheel. Can't come this way with uh, the big one, but I can come with the small one here and continue rising it. And at this, and at this point, I abandoned the templates, but we're gonna come check it with them again. But uh, anyway, even if we are not exactly to the template, you know what, I don't care, as long as it's pleasing for my eyes. And then, of course, when we're making this piece for this side, we're gonna have to match it with this one. We're gonna have the experience already. That literally changed everything. This feels so much better. This didn't occur to me. Oh my God. It is like perfect now. Look at that. <laughs> it came down here and it follows perfectly here. And now this just needs to go down but it can't because of course if it could it would be wrong and this feels so much better look at that curve now here right it, it is perfect no highs no lows automatically it came where we wanted it to be <laughs> amazing let's see how it fits there Interesting. Well, well, I guess we're gonna have to cut it and start dealing with it because right now it's this is raised here, I can tell. So, yeah, eventually. Well, that's gonna happen in the next episode because we have, I think, more than enough footage with this. 
and the second part I don't think I'm gonna even film. Of course, if there's something interesting, I'm gonna show it to you, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna film the whole thing. I'm really surprised that this turned out so well. I've never done such a complicated part, but I had to watch lots of uh, Ray Shalin's videos. I'm gonna put his, a link to his uh, channel in the description of this video. I'm pretty sure most of you know him, but if somebody doesn't, there's gonna be a link. So anyways, I'm proud of this. I hope I can repeat it, like, you know, copy, paste, and on the other side, flip around. <laughs> but I'm not gonna cut the valance before I have the other one. I wanna have both parts and literally should be able to put them one against the other and other than this shape, everything else should match like. And then once I make the other one, we're gonna cut the valance and we're gonna install them, but that's gonna be, probably that's gonna be in the next video. So anyway, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, subscribing, sharing, and supporting the channel. It's really important. Thank you for all your donations, for financial support and everything. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.